course they're not going to call it gender-based violence terrorism. They'd have to lock too many men up. Seriously, 42% of the police force admittedly would be locked up. A lot of men that all of us know and love would be locked up, right? That is why we don't care about this kind of terrorism because it's too common. I'm about to do a little deep dive into all this as I'm prone to do, connecting a lot of these dots. Because um, you could argue that this man incites violence. This man does the same. Then what do you do about those? What about the men who incite that? All of the men on YouTube who come into my comments on a regular basis that I have to block, or sorry, hide, they are convinced that they are the victim and that I am harming them by talking about what they do to us. In fact, they tell me regularly that they report my channel for hate speech, even though I'd argue I love men more than they do. Just expect more from men. Their hatred of themselves is why they hate me and everybody. So, I already know that Andrew Hate and all those guys are radicalizing these men. And that is a very serious threat. But this is nothing new. We're just seeing it more and only because they don't have girlfriends who are hiding it for them. And wives and children and mothers and grandmas even who are hiding it from the public. Or when they're not hiding it, they're not even believed anyway. So what's the point of telling people? They don't have secret keepers anymore who to take their violence out on. So then they and then we have to talk about it. Before I get into this pretty depressing subject that I'll try to make somewhat lighter, I want to point out some odd thing from the story don't know what story I'm talking about. It's this, you know, mass pew pew. I'm sorry, I'm not even gonna call it pew pew because it was a stat dab. Mass on a lie in Sydney at a mall. It was specifically targeted at women. And this man um, hated women so much that he literally had to kill a baby woman. Can can you imagine? Now, I know, mental illness, mental illness, mental illness. You will never convince me that that alone is why this man did this. And it's actually insulting to everybody with the same mental illness or any mental illness because they're not doing this. It's just because a white man did it. That's it. That's it. They won't call him a terrorist because he just like hurt women anyway. But they never call him a terrorist if they hurt unalive people and they're white. Well, ne ne they're never called that ever except by, you know, more reasonable people. But by the way, even when they talk about this hero, they still frame it in really misogynistic ways. This is one of the French dudes who was like holding the thing, trying to actually do something instead of just watch all this unfold like a, most men. There were several men who straight up were chasing after this dude along with the female cop who took care of it. So not all men were cowards and this guy was one of them. French dude who's already been offered um, citizenship. <laughs> Welcome to stay in the country as long as he wants. And, I mean, this is the New York Post, so of course. But this is what they do. Hunky Frenchmen. All these, all these women want to marry him now. will never miss an opportunity to mock us and minimize women's pain. Because you know what? You know why women are attracted to this man? Or even just praising him? is because he did something that most men are not willing to do. Li actually protect people. The, like women. As any woman knows... And this has been my experience too, that it is almost always a woman who comes and saves the day when any of us are in danger. Even when we call the people in charge of protecting other people, like the police, they, they usually don't do anything. If anything, they put us in more danger. And then if you are a black indigenous or, or another woman of color, but especially a black woman, these men who are supposed to protect literally take your life. Oftentimes, as we have seen multiple times this year already. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go when women need help. So I'm sorry. You can call us like stupid little teenagers like we're all at a Beatles concert. You can acknowledge the fact that men don't protect us. And they never have. They literally cause us more harm. They are the predator. They're worse than bears. I've already covered that. Protectors of their egos and their image and other men. And they're providers of nothing but stress, extra work, and autoimmune diseases. <sighs> Hashtag not all men. Now, dad here blames mental health and the fact that his son wanted a, a, a girlfriend. Now I have, I really feel bad for these parents. Just the way he framed it, I'm like, hey daddy, are you an incel too? Cause you're talking like one. You're talking like this clown and this clown. More on them later. I'm really starting to wonder if daddy wasn't the role model for his son. As much as I feel bad for his dad, 
seems kind of just like a weirdo. You know, old man. But you know what I say about old men. You don't ever assume they're harmless just because they're old. The person I feel bad, the most bad for is this woman. I don't know. Maybe she enabled this man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough. But this is very complex and nuanced and every day more is revealed. And anybody would get frustrated with the, with the media uh, just like harassing you, especially after finding out such devastating news like your son is dead. And by the way, he was a parent. The whole world is talking about him and in the worst way possible. Well, except men. And they're like, poor man had mental illness, mental illness. But the neighbors say that the parents were very religious. And we know what that usually means, especially when it comes to men. One woman who went to the church with the Inchmel son admitted that she spotted alarming red flags after meeting, uh, meeting him for a couple of dates. Always ask women who have dealt with these men other than their mom. <laughs> but sometimes their mom are, are terrified of them. It was the mom who called the cops. And in a lot of these cases, it's the moms or the wives or the girlfriends who literally lay all this in front of the authorities and are like, this man is scary. And they're like, oh, come on. I'm going to give you some examples later. Now, this guy was known for talking to himself. He played inline hockey at the skating rink. You know, just a good old-fashioned white boy. Innocent white boy with some mental health issues. And I, don't even, I don't even have time to go into the whole show that happened, uh, especially on Twitter, when they just assumed that he was Muslim. Or basically, they assumed him anything but like a Christian white dude or like non-religious white dude. And then they had to backtrack a lot because their stuff was super racist. Anyway, I don't even I don't have time to go into that because it's already going to be a big video. That's just what they always do. Always. But dad is super weird. He has 700 pigeons at home. Pigeons! Like, like basically rats with wings. Anybody in any city, especially New York, knows that they're a menace. They suck! Why on earth would you want any pigeons? You must let 700. <laughs> He's like talking to their, like this is why I am just waiting for something to come out about dad. Because it could just be that this was schizophrenic and had all, all kinds of other problems. And maybe his dad did dedicate his whole life to taking care of him. And maybe they did da 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 But dad, I don't know. He, he's openly talking about how all of his pet fills ice cream containers with water, feeds all these pets, picks up a long pole with a super bag at the end and twirls it around the air, make them go away, but he feeds them. Like, the man seems pretty unstable himself. And he like broke out into songs while he's like, doing these interviews. Like, it sounds like he's a menace to his, ter to his neighbor. The family's ramshackle yard with vegetables and clusters of dahlias and, and cluttered with boats and cars and and like I know that I'm getting sounds like I'm getting off top I'm just painting a picture here and as much as I love these homes like I love going by homes where there's just junk everywhere because my my little ADHD doom box heart is like oh I can relate to that usually my ADHD is check is put in check by its impact on other people or I try to at least do that or any of my hoarding tendencies, which I'm also a minimalist too. At the same time, it's very weird. Um, it does not spill out into things that affect other people, usually. My husband might disagree with that. <laughs> We're working on it. We're working on it. I still don't notice things sometimes. But this, he regularly gets deliveries of grain from pigeon, his, for his pigeon collection. He warned, his, warned neighbors to beware of the rats, mice, and snakes attracted to, like, what are you doing, bro? He makes his, his son come home and help take care of these things, <laughs> like... And, you know, I'm, I'm sure that the neighbors are a little reluctant to talk crap about this family, especially seeing what they're dealing with. But, uh, they've made complaints about these damn birds because the neighbors are, like, noise and odor complaints. So, just saying, um, please do not blame this man's attack on just mental illness. I wouldn't be surprised if it is a weird combination or the perfect storm of violent family member, possibly dad, mental health issue, and radicalization online. Because also, and I'm going to get into this in a minute, the dude has a long Google uh, reviews history. I looked it up. I'm going to show him to you in a second. Of going to shrimp clubs as an escort, or at least tried to be. You put uh, those together, that alone, just the radicalization alone, with an unstable family, or a dad that's nuts, or a mom that's nuts, no woman in his personal life he can take that violence out on in secret. Of course he's going to hurt women in public then. Makes sense to me. 
So I just, there's just so much happening with these pigeons. This dad and his pigeon. I don't know, something about it really kind of weirds me out. Maybe because I had a neighbor in Queens who also fed pigeons and was a hoarder, which is actually a serious illness, like an addiction. She had 12 dead dogs in her backyard and um, her pet monkey, who uh, I used to wave and like talk to, um, she put him in a box to rot in her uh, front yard. Anyway, like every time she told me a story, it got scarier and scarier. So I don't know, maybe I'm projecting. I keep talking about the pigeon. I don't know how we're gonna get rid of these pigeons now after this, the sun's dead. Well, I don't, I'm just so confused by all this. Honestly, I'm kind of worried about uh, the mom. Some of the neighbors had some things to say. Dad was super religious. He parted with the Catholic Church after like his disgust with like the panel stuff, which I respect that. That I thought, I was like, that's a good thing. Uh huh. But then they all just talk about these birds. He loves those birds. Often takes his shirt off and lies in the back, <laughs> on his back and looks up at the sky while waving around a stick, which makes the pigeons stir up and fly about. And then, apparently someone on Reddit, now we can't, I mean, can't verify this, you know, claimed to be a close friend from high school and had a very different uh, picture of uh, this, you know, surfer, un unaliver man's dad. I mean, the picture alone, but okay. I don't want to be like ages, but um, I'm terrified of old men because almost most of the trauma in my life um, has come from old men. And, and I mean, including schmegdual trauma. So I don't trust old men either. They hide behind that sweet, cute, whatever. We saw what happened. And that college girl tried to help the homeless man. And then he ended up, he, he had uh, assaulted women and all kinds of stuff. Like not too long ago. Anyway, his mom was the sweetest thing ever, but dad was prone to outbursts of anger and borderline abusive. Although it probably wouldn't have been labeled that uh, way back in the mid nineties. Again, we don't know who this is, so it could just be someone saying stuff, stirring the pot. Um, but also, uh, who is going to say this uh, we, <laughs> outright? Like, the reason why people report this stuff anonymously, anonymously. And the dad, you know, he keeps talking about how, you know, he told the neighbor uh, that his son was a well-behaved boy who got a bus pass so he could travel around. At one point, the son came back home with some other backpackers to help weed the yard. Andrew just loves gardening. I'm concerned about his relationship with his dad. Just saying. Maybe there's nothing there. I don't know. I want to know where this violence came from. I mean, it came from the parents, but a lot of this is not just because of online radicalization, although it can. It can be that. It's unclear whether the, his parents knew of their son's double life as a male escort. So let's dig into that part. Before we get into that, let's talk about this. Um... I don't know, I, guess, I believe the dad, I guess, but there's some weird stuff happening here. The son called the police for domestic violence, but according to the dad, the, the, the son called because he was pissed that his dad took away his knife. But why did he have knives? I don't know. Maybe he just liked knives. Maybe he was afraid of his dad. Or maybe his dad was trying to do a public service and keeping um, weapons out of this kid or sorry not a kid not a kid ah i just did it you see how we do this we talk about men grown men a 40 year old man like he's a kid meanwhile anyone else of the same crime who is not white you know for a fact that the media constantly black men and black people in general uh as um older than they are and then uh when like a 40 year old man oh, he's just this like mentally ill kid you know had a bad day just wanted to surf you know but he had this minute. like this is literally how they frame every single story about every white man that is a terrorist according to the dad that his son had never threatened him but he got really angry and he called the police and accused him of stealing his knife and when he said look you're not going to keep these in my house that's when the son got pissed and his dad talked about how he did all this stuff, sacrificed all this stuff for, how, don't, how often do you hear dads talk like that when they actually didn't do anything? I'm not saying that he's lying, just saying dads love to talk about Leia, father of the year. Uh, especially the more a dad talks about how much he sacrificed for his son, the less I believe him. Every single dad that I've ever seen who's like, I did all this, that they didn't do any of that stuff. Oh, <laughs> they're like exaggerating. I took him to, then they spend the day with him, take him to the Gold Coast, take him wherever he wanted. But then other reports say that they were strange. And that he was just sending occasional texts to his mom saying where he was. That they weren't really hanging out. And he's been estranged for like five years. I don't know. I don't know. But then there's different accounts from the mom. 
According to the mom, he's the top of his class. His teacher loved him. He worked hard. He had lots of friends growing up. But then the dad's like, nah, he's kind of awkward. And his dad blamed being awkward and just, you know, set by not having a girlfriend for him doing this. <laughs> like him not having a uh, social skill and attacking all those women was because he didn't have a girlfriend. Which again, I'm like, are you uh, Daddy Warbucks incel? Uh, like what? He was frustrated out of his brain. Frustrated, you mean schmuggly frustrated? Out of his brain, is that what caused him to be mentally ill? Like, are you trying to say that? Cause it sure seems like you are. Which is why I'm not quite convinced dad is not a part of this. This little inchman being a terrorist, hey! And other neighbors like, and there's so many different accounts of this dude. I can't get a straight story, right? That's kind of how it always is. And it's usually men who are like, I never would guess who'd done that. And women are like, yeah, he gave me a creep. So I didn't really, couldn't really put my finger on it. But anyway, a neighbor said he was gentle, family oriented person who was very close to his parents. He was a quiet person, not very chat. Everyone always she seems shocked that they, they, they couldn't believe this would happen. Even if he has six knives. He was sweet and kind and wanted to be a teacher. That's what someone that met him on a dating site said. Even though the, the woman at church who went on him was like, mm. Again, everyone has different experiences with people. That's why no one believes us. When And that's why, like, all these actors, like Scarlett Johansson, someone reminded me of her the other day. It's like, I got in love with Alan now. Okay. Uh, just because he didn't do anything weird to you didn't mean he didn't, um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. His daughter. I mean, definitely didn't do that if he literally married his adopted daughter. Like, made films about dating teenagers. Like, well, how much? Anyway, he's nice to me, right? So that's why, like, a lot of times none of this even matters anyway. Because there's always going to be somebody who will vouch for a man who does terrible things because he was nice to her. So these people who all went, they're like, no, nah, it's fine. Nothing happened. No big time. But the church person was like, mm mm. And another lady was like, yeah, he's super compulsive. He's weird. I <laughs> stopped messaging him. He's moving in a way, bleh, goodbye. So he has been trying to get it on for a while. And this is why I think he was on the in Schmel spectrum. Because he had previously listed himself as a male escort on multiple, all these sites, at least three. I'm an athletic, good looking 39 year old guy. That was only a year ago, okay? Just for a little timestamp. By the way, the fact that the police are literally like, yeah, it's not terrorism because it's not, and it's not linked to any ideology. Because they just won't take that little extra leap that an ideology, like women aren't human beings and oh men things, that's an ideology. <laughs> okay, anyone who goes on really like YouTube or anything for five minutes and you're a man, you are like on the fast track to men who think that. Ask any man when they get a, a, a profile online. Everything is a fast track to the Inchmel world and then to radicalize them into the alt-right. <laughs> like, it's, it's concerning. Literally caught them feeding my husband about beta stuff. And I was like, what is this? Like, I don't know, what does beta mean? I was like, oh my God, oh my God, no, no, no. And he was just like trying to watch stuff about healthy masculinity. It's all sending them to the right. So that's why this is a big problem. And yet I get constantly worried about getting banned because these little Inchmels think I am the terrorist for literally talking about what they do. So not only was he all these things going on, he was also, you know, a hobo. Now, I'm not saying hobo in like an unhoused, uh, like choosing to be that way. You know, a lot of that is linked to mental illness. I am saying as somebody who lived in my truck for a long time and was in this world and also, you know, lived out of a backpack for a long time. And I never got into the surfing world, but it's very much like the climbing world. And any of these like kind of uh, free spirit, sportsy, travel, like nomadic, full of Sagittarius people like me. Um, there are lots of men in that world that you should not trust. Because some of them uh, well, just simply hate women and are violent. And some of them have also serious mental illness issues on top of that. So this was his little profile. One of them. And then, you know, leave it to Reddit, man. Someone on Reddit put a thread of every single Google review that he'd ever done, or at least maybe recently. And it is honestly fascinating because it includes reviews from gentlemen's club, clothing store, Domino, <laughs> coffee shop, horror shrimp clubs. Like, who gives 7-Eleven a review? This one is why I'm like, okay, maybe he wasn't mentally ill. I can't, I don't know. 7-Eleven is the last place I would review. It's like, then escort. Like, 
Let's just look at one of these reviews of a gentleman's club from the Serial Unaliver in Sydney. I swear, I'm like, did I write this? It sounds like, like <laughs> a white woman from the US. <laughs> really fun play i'm sorry i'm only saying that because uh i don't know who else does this but i just i know white women very well and uh people make fun of me all the time in this country in france they're like god y'all are so fake uh because it's like oh my god it's amazing oh my god it's the best thing ever and then so they're like everything here is like pas mal. <laughs> anyway sorry oh focus the atmosphere pumping really amazing the lit stages had a great mix of people too Really fun stuff! Alright, really good fun! <laughs> Hard to read this and bobble my head so much. The dancers were extremely sexy. Awesome, really? Over a really nice looking pumping place. Overall, a really nice looking pumping place with great music, amazing girls, and people! Like, it sounds like he's reviewing Chuck E. Cheese. That's the same way he reviews, like, uh, curry. Absolutely incredible. I loved it. Caps Plus. I guess they sell caps. Hats? I don't know. It sounds like clothing, a lot of stuff. I love this play! You know what I mean? Like, who is this enthusiastic about dominoes? Okay, I know this may seem unrelated, but this is like a really, um, this is such a, like, terrifying topic, and I'm trying to bring some humor. Sorry, I want you to be able to see my cute dog in case you also need a therapy dog while going over this stuff. I know I do. Pizza Hut was really awesome. Pizza Hut. <laughs> of all places, bro. The staff were really happy too. Really close to the beach. Really walking very nice and beautiful. Okay, so like this is what makes me think he's maybe not so stable. Same thing with coffee shops. Amazing. You know, it's actually comforting to know that, that US Americans are not the only ones who do this crap because uh, we get so much shit for this. Amazing. Like, look, the 7 the, Eleven the review. This place is awesome. I love the cafe. It's really nice. I love doing some walking around the Like, okay, uh, these reviews are gonna make me think, okay, this is a mental health factor too. But I'm not convinced it didn't come from daddy. But, and in the same tone, and when he's talking about, you know, so the cuties escort. I really love this place. The girls were incredible. And the staff, it, like he literally, all of it's the same. It's always the same review, but like a little different. Hair salon. Friendly paper, great! Okay, he only left a few bad reviews. One of them was a hostel he stayed at. And this is what makes me think that like, maybe he's just a menace to society. Because any of the places that had to deal with him other than like giving him food and like catering to him were in a way that didn't need him to pay them be nice, like a gentleman's club, for instance. Although, you know, 7-Eleven, I'm not sure, but whatever. But the backpack where he's actually sleeping and interacting with people and staying, like, he did not like that place. Really didn't like that place. The other place he really didn't like? The place that sharpened his knives. Boy, he just went off on them. And, I mean, he wrote all this. I'm not going to even read all this. It's going to take too much time. But he was pissed that they left him with two blunt knives that are basically useless now. What are you using these for? What? You're a backpacker and a surfer. You live in your car or a storage unit. What are you using these knives for? By the way, there's also an article about all these too. So I didn't just find this on, on Reddit. Was his whole purpose of having these knives so that he could um, stab seven people? 14 of them women because in this article they went and actually talked to the knife sharpener of the place he left that review so this isn't fake according to this journalist but they didn't want to be named i don't blame them there was nothing angry distorted nothing like that he just wasn't happy he didn't smile he was just very vague very blank but here we go women always know but the customer i was dealing with at the time actually was there as well and even she said he's odd he's a little bit weird the knife sharpener said that he came in to have his hunting knives honed. Says he uses them every day in his house. Okay, uh, so that's a lie unless he's going to, to daddy's house to chop up some weird stuff. I don't know who he's hunting with. It doesn't sound like he's actually a hunter of anything but women. Um, he, what are the knives? A pig sticker? And the other was another type of hunting knife, probably about eight inches long. And then a week after he helped him, he left a one-star review and said all oh, this crap. But you know, for anybody who thinks that maybe this was just, you know, a fit of rage and was just having an episode, well, I've found some sources that have already said, looking at his phone, that he's been thinking about it. Now, I don't necessarily know how psychotic breaks work. I don't know if how premeditated things are, but this man was thinking about it. And an unnerving Google search history, uh, 
In the lead up to the attacks, the police finding he had looked up knives and how on his phone. He had a fixation with unaliving. He also had a fixation with knives. So that in of itself it, it tells us it wasn't a spur of the moment attack. The other article, which I can't find because there's so many screenshots, had said that he had been to two other malls in the area. The dude, which makes them think that he was planning this thing. Or, you know, comparing which one's be the better one to take, do it. I don't know. I don't know. I, the point of this video is more to have people ask more questions uh, than anything. I never trust the angle that the media gives us. Because usually, I mean, the, the media is owned by mostly rich white men. And a lot of the journalists who work for uh, these publications do not get to write their own headlines. Actually, no journalist ever usually gets to write their own headline. Editors write the headline. And even that usually has to go, I'm assuming always has to go through the higher up. Um, but even the, the, you know, like, even the writers and the journalists themselves always don't have full control over uh, their own reporting. I've never been a staff writer, but I say this as a freelance journalist who's had many things come out where I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, oh my God. Uh, literally just completely rewrote it without even running it by me. Most editors don't do that, but some of them do. And the one who did it worst was a man. Oh, one last thing. One woman that got on a date with him had met him on a dating site and she had just turned 18. And uh, she said he was older than he originally said in his dating profile. Hmm. I don't know when this is from, but this man's 40. Going out with teenagers? That checks out with everything else. All these things, I swear to God. It's like if they check one box, they check them all. We're probably gonna find out soon that he was also a white supremacist because all these things are almost always tied together. And I'm gonna show you an example, a perfect example of that in a bit after I go into a few more things. Another thing I wanna talk about is the, of course, people, and it's especially like homophobic, transphobic, misogynistic men are like because they found out that he also advertised himself to um men or women they're always going to try to pin this on <laughs> as a way to be like homophobic transphobic or something right they're always going to try to do that here's the thing you will never convince me that a desperate man will not also sell himself uh, to another man have you ever watched anything about prison is every man in prison gay Doubt it, but we know what happens in men's prison and that grape is a big part of it. And it is not usually about anything but domination, uh, control, intimidation, revenge. Sometimes maybe it's just, I don't know, to come. But all I know is like, just in case your mind jumps to like any of these conclusions because the, 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 the way it's framed in the media, do not let them do this to you. He could have been anything. Could have been bi. Could have been straight. Could have been gay. I don't know what he was, but I know he wanted a girlfriend. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know, this is a hunch, that his indoctrination into patriarchy culture and possibly his attraction towards women makes him feel entitled to have one. And whether he has to sell himself to a rich lady or lie about his age on a dating app or just, you know, sorry, I I'm so used to this because I'm from the U.S., but uh, uh, uh as revenge because no one would date him. It seems like he was probably, at, at the very least, felt entitled to women. They're probably attracted to them too. And without a woman taking care of him, what's he to do? What will men do when they're this indoctrinated into the incel world? And he was a weird kid with a super weird dad who didn't, another neighbor said he didn't mix with the kid, just, just was weird. And I don't know if it's because he needed money or needed human touch or needed schmags. Need. Sorry. Not need. Please excuse me. It's never a need. Men don't need this. Don't let them convince you otherwise. That's how uh, spousal grape has been um, justified for so long. But he's wanting to massage people. Trying to hook up with girls constantly. I don't know. Perhaps re online radical radicalization made him, like a lot of men, be so obsessed with schmegs and his own pleasure, thinking that that's what intimacy is about, rather than actual relationship, you know? And by the way, my abusive ex, remember I told y'all, I've shown you screenshots, I have received. He was literally solic soliciting schmegs on Craigslist in uh, cities hundreds of miles away. While we were together, literally, on out of town, camping, he's putting an ad on Craigslist in Colorado Springs. So anyway, violent men who are heavily indoctrinated in patriarchy and misogyny, they also tend to be really obsessed with their own pleasure and schmeg. Even 
graphic closed door services, whatever that means. My ex's ads were so disturbing. Another interesting thing about my ex is I was dating him when that whole Santa Barbara thing happened. And I'm actually going to go into that story in a minute because it, this is all related. But when I told, you know, it was basically a dude who, you know, it was one of the first like really big inchmel mass unaliving. I mean, I'd argue that most of the men who do this are inchmels, but this one was like literally like I'm doing this because I'm a virgin and I'm pissed and I hate women and I want revenge. Like he just said it. Like other men like think it, but he literally said it. And I remember that was the moment when I when I was like really upset by that story. I think this was pretty early in very early when I like was dating my ex, and I told him about it. And he was like so and I was like oh my god do I have to explain to you why this is so upsetting and I tried to exp I was so mad that I had to explain to him why this was so upsetting why like uh, that's when I was like oh my god I don't ever want to date somebody that I have to educate on this level of feminism like this isn't even like feminism 101 this is like you probably believe this crap you're probably a and, and in the end he was I mean he was he hated women. I really hated women and he especially hated me. But that was my first red flag is he did not see in Schmel ass unalive being a big deal or why. And that is why you really need to check these men that you're dating or going on dates with, with their online presence. Because I promise you, a lot of you would not be dating some of the men that maybe you are or going on dates with if you saw the comments that they put under other men's stories uh, on things happening in the media. When they give these men they've never met the benefit of the doubt, you are not only just going to have to educate this man, but he's not going to learn. He doesn't want to learn. This is like, there's probably some deep seated absolute hatred of women in there. It hasn't shown itself yet in your couple, in your daily life yet. If he cannot connect the most simple dots, if he's somebody, and by the way, uh, just found out Brock ugh, Turner. Oh my God. I have, I mean, if, if I have time, I'm gonna make a video on it. He's going by Alan. His mom is like a toxic boy mom. Ask questions about these cases. Ask the person you're dating or just talk about it and watch his reaction. It will tell you a lot. His lack of a reaction will tell you a lot. Him defending a man he's never met and assuming he might be, that means that, ugh, please, okay, let me get into it now. Because this is not, this is not new. They're just starting to pay more attention to it and it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just means that we really have to be more careful. These men have been doing this all along, just doing it in public. But look at this. Shows a lone wolf threat changing. This is what the experts are saying, right? Now these people, <laughs> you know, investigators, maybe uh, hopefully policymakers are starting to think, hmm, maybe we should stop worrying so much about like terrorism and um, redefine it. Uh, and especially from broadening your uh, focus from terrorism to domestic and gender violence. It also says that uh, they need to start taking these lone wolf <laughs> dudes more seriously like hello how 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 long have we been asking y'all to they're talking about how the boundaries they tried to put these people in are starting to blur they used to be like fixation uh, extremism domestic like they thought these were all not related they're all the same they're all related this is all terrorism they just don't take it seriously because that you know a lot of us don't talk about it that much don't believe women even women don't believe women and like I said in the very beginning, most of us <laughs> would, if they literally put every single man who has graped or been, you know, physically violent toward, uh, I don't know how many men would be left, especially if you include emotional, unaliving you through your nervous system because you weaponize your mu moods, but you never leave bruises on her, stuff like that. Like this is so big. I think they're just like literally afraid to even touch it. You know what I mean? Especially because again, 42% of police admit to being like beaten their arms. How many, like that's admitted. So like, okay, then uh, like half the cops go to like, oh, that does surprise me by the way. Look at just the way they talk about this. This is also like coded in racism. 
The people who present a serious security threat and risk of mass harm to the public don't just look like terrorists anymore. They never did. It was always white men doing this. It's all in the U.S. It's almost always white men who are doing this stuff. It's just you know, oh god. Anyway, they just look like they have poor mental. Health. What does that look like? It seems to me like they just assume that if you have poor mental health, that you are what disheveled, how crazy look in your eye. You know, like I have so much mental health uh, illnesses in my family. My dad was institutionalized two or three times. My grandma's was literally. My dad said that she spent her whole life rocking in her chair saying, I just don't want, can't handle this anymore. I just can't, that's literally all she said for years, rocking in her chair. She also had a stump and only one finger. And he talked about how she would throw biscuit batter over. Anyway, okay, uh, lots of mental health issues in my family. I've struggled with my own. What does that even look like? What are you talking about? God, I hate, I hate how they write these things. People even literally ask the police like, hey, do you think that these were motivated by insult type ideology. I don't know. I don't know. I can't get I don't know. Come on. Literally, if this was not a white man, they would immediately be like, this terrible. What's so funny is when they talk about spending money on mental health, I don't care how much you spend on mental health. If you are literally not address addressing the systemic problems, and in this particular case, misogyny rooted in patriarchy and the ways that we've been conditioned, what's the point? You can admit, you, 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 this alone is not going to fix this because this is a much deeper problem. Hating women is not a mental illness. It is just the default. <laughs> I mean, like I've said before, even I hate women. I don't, but it was in me. I have to work hard to not hate women and not hate myself because this stuff is so, it's so indoctrinated in us. Even more so if, you know, depending on your family system and your culture environment and everything you've been through and someone finally said it if you put an event like Saturday's attack through the, that lens that that these acts are a form of gender terrorism the number of people in our lives and getting higher and higher you know and several people wrote articles being like can we just please call it what it is because this is what it's really about the ideology of Hatred, hatred towards women and the murky depths of the man's are online have encouraged a new swath of angry men to perceive women as the oppressors. That is what just gets me. We're the oppressors, okay? Like literally all you have to do is look at like who still has the power and the money and like just literally look at in the United States, Congress and Senate and the presidency has like, how can you even, but of course, look, of course, it's always projection. I literally, I, told, I, I said this in an earlier, I get reported regularly for hate speech, bullying, harassment. All I'm doing is talking about <laughs> my experiences, the experiences of women I know, the experiences of women in the news with a feminist lens and a cultural analyst lens, and then I am hate speech. Meanwhile, they're radicalizing our men online all the time. So there's plenty of articles, there's no problem. I would love to hear some people from Australia. If you follow me and you live there, please chime in. I have heard that it is not so different than, than the U.S. in terms of like bro, bro culture. That's just what I've heard. There's this whole article in Refinery29 uh, that goes into all this. And, you know, just this right here. Recognizing mi misogyny as an extremist ideology rather than a normalized social belief is long overdue. Because literally these cops are like, there, well, there's no, there's no ideology behind it, so it's not a hate crime. What is mis misogyny? Until you start to actually label it for what it is, the resources that need to address it won't be there. Punishment too. The punishment for a hate crime is way bigger. If you, if something is labeled terrorism, as the label unlocks different resources, involves different policing bodies, and to be frank, can command a different level of seriousness from both authorities and the public. The experts are warning that this rise of, mm -hmm, fueled by high profile violent men like Andrew Tate are radicalizing boys and when you get dudes like this, this man, I cannot stand, who literally, him and uh, Durham Henderson, so, who take this, this stuff, and then they literally say, women, date them. Women, marry these men. We won't have this problem if women would just be the sacrificial lamb. Fuck you. I can't stand you. Stop down the way. Uh, I need my flute. That's my angry device. <laughs> and then uh, Durham Henderson, look at this. This is what their takeaway is because of this idiot.
and stuff like this. Besides that, with that Toronto thing, he was literally like forced monogamy. That's the, that's the solution. Forced for who? It's definitely not for men. But then, that men should take them, make themselves dangerous, take their proper place in the world. It'd be a formidable force. Ah! The thing is, is that the Andrew Tates out there are, are like frat boys. They're easy, they're easier to spot. It's the, it's the Scott Galloway, Jordan Peterson level guys who have think that this doctor and this bald rich man who, who literally has no background in sociology or gender or like literally anything, has no credentials to be talking about this. It's those men that scare me more because those men go after like, the dorks, the artsy guys, the ones who are not like, raw, 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 right? Those guys go for entertainment. It's the, uh, it's the sad, sensitive men. And I know this because my dad was this man. You know who else's dad was this way? Virginia Woolf. That is, that is how I started to connect a lot of dots. I read, I started reading so much of her stuff in college. Remind me to do a video on her because holy crap, the, um, the king baby artist who's moody and sensitive and on, only, you know, is intimidated by men, all that stuff. They are the worst. And I will explain why in another video, especially if we go into her dad, because boy did, he literally is responsible for her mom and her sister dying. You will never convince me anything else. That man literally, that's how I started realizing these men literally unalive you through exhaustion. But look at this. It's these dorks. It's these dorks that are out here. Who are Jake Davidson, this guy in the UK, five people, and his mother. I'm telling you, like, don't think that being a pick me who doesn't also address the way that comes out as a boy mom, don't think that that's gonna save you from these men. These men will literally hate you and take your life too. And look at the same argument that we saw from the Sydney dude. Lack of success at dating apps, dissolution of life, self-hatred, disappointment in him missing out on relationship. Oh, he sounds like the, the, the little pigeon, king pigeon daddy uh, description of his son. So now I want to bring it all back to why I always question the fathers of these men. I am not necessarily blaming the fathers. This is the lots of factors in this. And also I question the mothers a lot of times too, because sometimes it's the mothers who are just worshiping these men. A lot of times the dad did something and they hate mom or they hate other women because really of what dad did or what dad didn't do. And dads need to be watching out for this. Dads need to be watching out for their sons getting radicalized online. Seven people, including Elliot were uh, died and then 13 more were injured in this horrific event or whatever. His parents were concerned, tried to report him, more on that in a second. Social worker contacted the police, tried to warn them. Shocker, they didn't listen. Entitlement, entitlement, entitlement. This was back when they actually used the term Asperger. But just because he's on the spectrum, like it's an insult to any neurodivergent people to be like, oh, it's because of this. Really, because uh, there's a lot, like, I, I don't even need to explain that, right? Oh my God, look, he's dreaming. He's dreaming. Oh my God. I swear, he's got a sixth sense. He always knows when I'm watching him. He'll be in the middle of dreaming and then be like, I feel like she's staring at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hear him sign. Okay, I just want to take a break from this hard topic for some pet therapy. So this was a different article and it was written later and it's so much more in depth. Uh, his mother called the police on her son. Mother did. Um, but they left after Elliot convinced them that his online ra uh, rantings were harmless. At that point, Elliot had already purchased three pew pews and had been practicing at a firing range in preparation for his retribution. retribution. Even though his dad doesn't blame the police, he kind of should partly. He said that the law should change because if they had done a mm check, pew pew check, they would know that Elliot had three automatic one and they would have had the right to seize him for 24 hours and this whole scheme would have been over and thwarted well probably not i don't know dad i think you're being a little uh, my guess is he still would have attempted it but at least uh he may i don't know i don't know also just want to bring in this because again this is all related in elliot's 
YouTube or his little manifesto. He detailed his childhood family problems, his inability to girlfriend, and his hatred of women, ethnic mi minorities, and interracial couples. And it contained his plans for a massacre. But also, I think a lot of this was his own internalized stuff. I'll get to that in a minute. His dad knew he'd been writing stuff and he asked if he could see it. And he's like, yeah, I'll let you see it later. I need parents to be more curious about their children, especially when they're worried about them. He was far from evil. Something happened to him. He was the most beautiful, kind, sweetheart of a boy. He was adorable and he would just laugh so much. Again, this kid was probably radicalized online. You will never convince me that dad didn't have something to do with it. At the very least, just negligence. Or maybe something about that. Elliot said in his journal that his rage began to build even as a youngster, as the son of a Hollywood insider with a front row seat to the entertainment industry's most powerful and glamorous. So by that, what he means is that, so Elliot was born in London to Peter Rogers, who is white, as far as I understand. And Lee Chen, a Malaysian-born nurse who had worked as a unit nurse on Indiana Jones. Peter also worked in film, directing television commercials, and working on the hit film Hunger Game. Okay, if he's working on Hunger Game, I don't know what he was on that. He was like a dr Okay, so Hollywood, and you know how I feel about most men in Hollywood. So at the age of five, they moved to California, and that was just the best time of his life. But when Elliot was seven, Peter and Chen divorced. A year later, Peter remarried. This time, I don't know how to say her name. Um, Sumaya Akabun? I'm sorry, that's probably not right. A Moroccan actress who had appeared in the Hollywood blockbuster Greens. So dad, huh, why did dad marry so quickly? I would love to know date dad's dating life. Getting married a year after your parents, uh, after a divorce, that's a little jarring for kids. Especially maybe dad was a little cheater. Who knows? Whatever. It was also this year when they got married that he started his long journey of therapy. Oh, so something happened and he needed a therapy all of a sudden. The same year dad remarries someone else. I'd love to know how old this woman is. Wouldn't be surprised if she was a lot younger. Anyway, what I'm saying is that a lot of times the casual misogyny of their father or just negligence and not paying attention or not caring about their kids and what their kids are up to, that plays into it too. So what did he do? He got into the world of Warcraft with heroes and villains and then So in his journal, this is why I'm reading all this. Elliot said, my little nine-year-old self realized that there were hierarchies. That's the, that's the word y'all, hierarchy. That is what patriarchy is, white supremacy culture, um, all the isms, right? Capitalism is rooted in it. That is literally what it's all about is this hierarchy, right? And white, cishet, rich, uh, what, Christian or whatever, men are at the tippy tippy top, able-bodied, especially if they're good looking, whatever, tall, what does even good looking mean? European standards, of course, because it's always relative to that, what's good looking. There's a top, and he was like, it's not fur. I wouldn't be surprised if he was pissed because he's jealous of his white dad. That some people were better than others. Jealousy and envy. Those are the two feelings that would dominate my entire life and bring me immense pain. My guess is that this kid who had a white dad and maybe not the best white dad in Hollywood, which is very hierarchical and totally reinforces all these systems of oppression. And he didn't get he couldn't get laid despite having a daddy with access to that much power. Apparently kids bullied him or stuff like that. Moved high schools all the time. For all the things that Elliot had, the black BMW. Okay, this kid is loaded. Any kid with a BMW, designer sunglasses. There was one thing he, that always eluded him, a girlfriend. And that became his obsession until the very end. Look what he said. I mean, look at me, I'm gorgeous. But you girls don't see it, I don't understand. There's also like a lot of racism around the way white supremacy culture like feminizes uh, Asian men. I don't know enough about this to speak on it, but please feel free to add in the comments. But I'm curious if that played out here. Like I know that the way, from what I understand that in white supremacy culture, this stuff plays out where a lot of times the 
proximity to whiteness indoctrinates men in different ways and it plays differently in, in each community. You know what I mean? Like, but from my understanding, the Western media in general, like really is uh, uh, like uh, emasculates men for, of Asian descent. I don't know, like, I don't know enough about it to speak on it. I don't, I don't think I should speak on it anymore. Please add anything on this if this is your lane. It's not my lane, but I also want to acknowledge that this plays into all this. And that's why we can't fight patriarchy without also fighting white supremacy culture and capitalism and ableism and uh, uh, homophobia and tra uh, uh, transphobia and all the things because it's all about uh, hierarchies and, and domination and all this crap. And usually where you find one, you find like all of it, right? And y'all ask me for book recommendations all the time. This book right here. This book right here explains all of it and it changed my life. I highly recommend if you haven't already read it. And, and what she calls The Ladder. Sonia Renee Taylor, literally her work changed my life. But I'm, just, I'm gonna wrap this up soon. I just wanna get through the rest of this guy's story because it really, uh, this is the canary in the coal mine. This is when we were like, oh, wow, okay. Okay, now they're just gonna like unalive us straight up and they have been. And we're still like afraid to name it. But look what he talks about. Finding out about Shanks is one of the things that truly destroyed my entire life. Shmay. The very word fills me with hate. I would always covet it. I always fantasize about it, but I would never get it. This is also ties in with how um, it is white men in uh, like, usually the United States, but not just there. But all so much of the stuff that comes out of California from corn, hum, is also radicalizing these men. And the <gasps> So his dad said he tried to talk about these issues with Ellie. You know, there's nervousness around girls. Oh, it's just normal teenage jitters. And then he said stuff like this. Of course you're gonna find a girlfriend. Of course you're gonna fall in love. Of course you can have children. And there's no rush. I put it down to just straight youthful jealousy. I didn't think that he'd be harboring lusts of t terrible deeds in his head. I didn't think that he'd plan a revenge. Here's the thing. Dads need, and, well, not just parents, but dads need to start teaching their, their son that they're not entitled to girlfriends and that they need to learn how to be happy without that expectation. Because this whole, oh no, don't worry, you'll get one. Come on, try harder. Of course you'll get one. Why would you say that? They already feel entitled to us. Maybe raise boys to not be so freaking dependent on our validation and our feeling entitled to our body and learn to stop hating themselves so much because they won't deal with their stuff and they need us as a distraction. Same thing goes for women too, right? So I'm like, don't date men, find yourself. His fury towards women drew him to misogynistic website. One forum said, start envisioning a world where women fear you. Oh, hmm, that sounds a little like a uh, This is what gets me. When Elliot sent the website to his father, Peter angrily called his son, Elliot, why are you going on these websites? This is negative. This is evil, kind of. Kind of. And you shouldn't go there. But the father's outrage failed to work. <laughs> he failed to realize the depths of it. Like, it, what? If your son is sending his dad, you, this, trying to radicalize you, uh, do you think maybe he's in it deep? He's not even hiding it. And it's negative. <laughs> like, honestly, if, if I were a dad and my son sent me this, I'd be afraid he was going to unalive uh, my wife. Like, y'all, like, this reminds me of the Appalachian Trail. I just talked about all those women who needed help. The men were just like, mm, it's just easier to not really deal with this. <laughs> and so they didn't. And all those women got harassed and stalked by men because the men just didn't want to. They didn't feel like it. It's not fun. I already know they use escapism to avoid all their problems. Why would they do any different when it comes to confronting their son on something that makes them feel shame? The young man became obsessed with losing his virginity. Peter tried reasoning with his son on this too. There's no shame at all in not losing your virginity or losing it at a later age. Some people never do. <laughs> Some people go to church and choose chastity. God. You're the 
divorced at this dad. Ah! Did you not have like a brother, an uncle who could have talked to him about this? Because you suck at this. Elliot's life had become a vile mixture of desire and denial. And the tension reached a boiling point. Uh, look at this. Look at this. This is important. At a party last summer, he wrote that he had decided to give women one last chance to help him lose his virginity at 22. When the girls at the party ignored him, he grew angry. He climbed onto a 10-foot ledge and pretended to shoot partygoers with an imaginary gun. When Elliot tried pushing several women off the ledge. Okay, hello, hello. I mean, okay, just, okay, sorry. A group of men intervened. Wow, look at that. Men actually helped. Oh, that's promising. And shoved him off instead, resulting in a broken ankle. Elliot told his father a different story. When Peter came to pick him up, Elliot claimed that he was the victim. Don't they always? All these insults. I'm a thinking and a thinking and You're hurt by patriarchy, but you're not the most important victim. But again, again, this is what narcissists do. This is what all abusers do. So this checks out. He claimed he was the victim, bullied. Look at he even made this up. Called a and beaten up. He told the police the same story. But they dropped the case after finding out Elliot had had been the aggressor. Oh, wow. Huh. I mean, just a little bit of investigating and, I don't know, asking people at the party. They found out that this dude, this kid lied. He was such a good liar, his dad said. He was such an incredible liar. But what did you do after this? Like, his mom is the one who called the police on him. I can't believe his dad admitted that he found out his son was angry about not losing and pushed women off the ledge. Tried to push women, tried to push women off the ledge. And to protect those women, he got pushed off and lied about all of it and sent incel sites to him. And he's like, I didn't have a, I can't believe he was this violent. And look at this. Though Elliot had seen many therapies, he was never formally diagnosed with a mental illness because he didn't have one. He didn't have one. Can we stop telling, that's why this cake, like, okay. I'm not saying that the Sydney dude did not have schizophrenia. I am just, I'm so tired of them just saying all these men who are unaliving children in schools, women out of just hatred and just at the public at large. The fact is like men are dying too of, of other men. You don't really need to get your stuff together. But it's the men. So this guy, again, I don't know. Doesn't sound like he had a mental illness to me. And I'm not blaming this on him being on the spectrum either. This just sounds like. Entitlement, patriarchy, a dad who probably, I don't know, I'm, he's not looking so good. N neglectful at the best. A lot of money, Hollywood, and watching, you know, Andrew Tate type stuff. Or uh, Jordan Peterson. Probably Jordan Peterson, honestly. Sounds like the perfect backstory. So after not hearing from her son for a couple of days, his mother became nervous, started sniffing around the internet, and that's when she found his YouTube account, which terrified her. Any mother, I hope, <laughs> would call the cops if they found their son doing that. But she was smart enough, she knew he would not consent to a mental assessment, so she called her son's life coach. Oh my God, he had a life coach. He had a therapist and a life coach. Uh, who called this, Who and they called the uh, Santa Barbara Mental Health Hotline. The hotline alerted the, and they sent a welfare check. But look at this. Elliot was a very, very polite, kind, well-spoken, well-spoken, well-dressed individual, his father said. And they and managed to say, you've got nothing to worry about. The police left without at taking any action or running a gun check. As the police left, a wave of relief passed over Elliot. And just a few weeks later, his retribution day arrived. And then he became the Inchmel hero of the internet. So all these men out there who want to like shoot me they, they look up to this dude and what cracks me up is that they even call themselves men going their own way no you're not you're not going your own way you're still obsessed with the drizzle drizzle well y'all literally steal everything and then they're like no we're not gonna date you Please, that's literally what we're begging. It's like, they're never gonna leave us alone. They don't know who they are without us. They don't know how to survive without our labor. They don't know what to do with themselves and all that self-hatred. And they don't know how to take care of themselves because they've never been expected to and some of them not even taught to. And so they're pissed and they believe that they are disadvantaged by modern day society. 
that feminism is toxic. I literally, they, this is the exact stuff they say on my page every day and I have to delete this crap all day. In the meantime, sexism is fake. Men have it harder than women. And everything the media teaches about relationships is a lie. I'd agree with that. I'll agree with that one. I'll give you that. Stop giving men microphone. Call it terrorism.